Say hi. 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 We're gonna record. Baby. Baby, gonna record. Okay. Baby. Baby, you're my baby. Hey, teacher friends. It's the first Monday of my summer vacation. I'm trying something new, and I'm gonna try recording vlogs this week. Um, my life's not that crazy exciting. My summer plans involve a lot of reading, so I'm mostly going to, I think, talk about that. Right now I'm reading the book Other People's Children by them. I'm totally letting you like get distracted by my daughter in the background demolishing our not tidy pantry. She's eating some rice right now, I think. Um, anyways, my thoughts on the book so far is that it talks a lot about the emphasis of teaching skills like speaking skills to kids of color as a way to help them move up in our society. Like they need to know how to almost like code switch into that more proper style to communicate as a way to open doors for them. And they all seem to know the manners of like the mainstream power group. And I've never heard this. Well, I've heard a little bit about code switching and like, um, we had a, I went to sessions by a man named Sharaki Holly who taught a lot about code switching, but I've never had this directly told me like, you have to teach the basic grammar skills and structure in order to help your kids. And um, I feel guilty because I've always taught kids of color and I've never done this. In fact, I've gone the other way and tried to teach them like more innovative things. And so what I'm wondering is, am I making a mistake? Like this makes sense. My kids should go to high school and know common and proper nouns and how to make sentences. But I teach Read 180 and I've been doing the curriculum that I'm given and just supplementing with like projects. And um, my kids don't know how to do that stuff. And I just pushed them down the conveyor belt of education without giving them those skills. And now I'm feeling guilty. I'm also wondering like, what resources do I use for next year to teach them these things? Like I learned this with worksheets, but right now everybody's like, worksheets are bad, worksheets are bad. But um, I have the edu, edu protocol field guide, which I'm looking at. I'll use some of those strategies, but I don't think it's enough to teach my kids. So my thoughts are spinning, my wheels are spinning. If you have ideas, please share them with me and I will try to drop by. Look at her putting the rice back in, do you see that? <laughs> Anyways, I'll try to keep these going throughout the vacation. Hi, it's Tuesday. Um, we're back from my niece's kindergarten graduation promotion ceremony. Um, I had to stop earlier because as I was trying to record, Diwari was trying to like run into the big kids on the swings and that's not happening. So um, we're home now where it is safe so I have time to talk. Um, first of all, I wanna talk about the promotion thing. I talked about this on my Instagram like last week and I got some feedback hi. about it. Hi. So I figured it would be good to, hi, they don't wanna hear you right now. Hi. So um, I figured it would be hi. good to talk about it and explain it a little bit more. So. Some people think that having a bunch of promotions are unnecessary and like it's meaningless and it's like giving every kid a trophy type of thing. But when I was at my school's eighth grade promotion last week, I saw so many proud parents as I walked around the parking lot and they were beaming. And I talked to my new principal and she said, you know, in this community, some of these kids aren't gonna graduate high school, unfortunately. So like, this is it. Also. I know that eighth grade is a higher achievement than some of my kids' parents have made, especially my immigrant kids who haven't gone that far in the American education system. So I think that we should celebrate those accomplishments. I also think that people who think that like eighth grade promotions are a waste of time are coming from a very privileged place. Their families didn't have to make the decision to drop the kids out of school so they could like go work instead of being in school. And they also have parents who gave them like, I don't know, they gave them the just belief that they should be in school and go to school. Like that's a privilege that you can do that. So if promoting from grade to grade came automatically for you, then that's a privilege thing that you should think about and be grateful for. Now, so I think that like an eighth grade promotion is good because you're switching schools. I think a high school graduation is good because you're finishing and switching. And my mom teaches preschool and I kind of get a preschool graduation because like you've been there for years and you're changing schools. But today I went to a kindergarten graduation and the school goes K-8 in that district. And so like, why are you graduating? You just graduated preschool and then you're, it's one year and you get a ceremony? Like, I don't get that. I think it was cute though to have us go and like the kids all sang songs and things and everybody gets a little recognition. Like I think that's cute, but parents were there like, fully dressed to the nines with like huge balloons and taking a nice picture of the kids and I'm like they just finished one year of school are they gonna think this is how it is every year so I don't have the like perfect solution to that but my brain is just thinking about these ceremonies and I think that yes they are good for middle school high school 
but um, kindergarten, hmm, I'm not sure, but anyways, yay to my nieces because they're going to first grade. They're twins, by the way, I say nieces. Um, okay, so that's one thing. Oh, bless you. The second thing, mom life. The second thing is when I got home today, I got this book in the mail. This is the other people's children book that I've been reading about. And so what I do a lot of the times is I do the Overdrive or Audible like audiobook of a book. And if I like it and I want to like add it to my shelf, I get the paper copy. Unless it's a book I know I'm going to be marking up as I read it. For example, like Edu Protocols or any book that's like about teaching that I want to mark and annotate, I get the paper copy first. So here's my full spectrum normally. If it's a psychology book, audio book, if it's fiction, I normally do like the Kindle book. And then if it's something I want to mark up, I do the paper book. But if I do the um, audio book or the Kindle book and I want to keep it, refer back to it, use the quotes from it, then I go ahead and order the paper book also. So this one arrived. I am super stoked. I'm also excited because I want to pull more quotes out to put on my Instagram feed. And I need the book to do that as I'm going. Um, I really like pulling quotes out of book as it, books because as a reader, I think those help me to get a good preview about what's in the book. I also think that there's some big essence that can come from like just a little excerpt. Um, it's probably because I'm an English teacher also and I like text evidence, but I like that text evidence and getting a chunk because um, it makes me think and then I'm like, oh, do I want to just book it out? So this book came, I'm excited you're going to be seeing more quotes from it on my Instagram feed, but also in the mail, a whole bunch of books came to our house today and um, I've done a book haul before. Hi, baby. I've done a book haul before. Go play. And I'm actually going to have a pile of books here and I'm going to do a book haul. But this time I'm going to mix Nuari's books with my books as they go. And I think I'm just going to like record every time I get a bunch of books in the mail. And then I'll put those together instead of making one big giant stack and trying to go through everything at once. Because that's a little overwhelming and it's better to do it as they come in. Then I'll put all those together to make a video. Oh boy. You want to see what she's doing? Oh yeah. Pulling everything out. Um, okay. So that's all for today. We just went to San Diego. We're home chilling now. We're going to clean up and do some chores. Going to keep cleaning her messes. So hopefully I'll have more for you tomorrow. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> I was just checking the lighting on this. <laughs> look, look. <laughs> what happened? Are you stuck? Oh, there you are. Yay. <laughs> Nuari and I are going to tell you about our books we just got. She gets books every month. Today she got extras because her uncle is visiting from Japan and so he brought her cute little books in Japanese. I don't know what these are, but it's about cars and it goes vroom vroom in Japanese. She likes the vroom vrooms. We got this one about a cute old man, something with a rat, looks like a folktale. And we got this one with a baby and it has monkeys. An elephant, can you do your elephant? What's elephant say? Arr, good job, be your elephant. Arr. Okay, you read that one okay and we got Walter the farting dog in Japanese oh huh. yeah woof woof got a puppy and then we got the books that I ordered for her I order her an average of four a month so we have uh oh it's about kids at the beach and they keep having mistakes it's by Shada Crumb um we got this because she's learning the word uh oh what, you want to read this one now yeah, okay, read this one. Yeah, this one. We got her this book called This Is Sadie by Sarah O'Leary. We got this one because the artwork in it is beautiful and we like to try that and it's about a girl. This one, I love you. Here you go, take this. Hold this book, read the book. We also got Bugs Galore because we've been gardening and we are into bugs and learning like bzzz. This one's by Peter Stein, so it's got bugs and it's got kids in it and I like that the kids are not just white that's a really big thing for me that we have diverse characters in our books look at those oh they're cute huh? uh oh they're cute huh oh and I got her this one it's a big kid book but I couldn't resist I've seen it for a long time and I've been putting it off but I just bought it I'll save it for her it's called fur feather fin all of us are kin by Diane Legg it's illustrated by Stephanie Liberis and look at the illustrations in this it's gorgeous and it teaches a little bit of science about the animals, like different types, like this one's about birds. The people in it are diverse, which like I said before is really important to me. Daddy is a science teacher, by the way, she likes owls too. Look, owl, ooh. 
those are our kid books. Now we also got some adult books since my last book talk, um, um, since my last book haul. I've talked about this a lot. I'm sure you know it's the Edu Protocol Field Guide 16 Student Centered Lesson Frames for Infinite Learning Possibilities by Marlena Hayburn, 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 by Marlena Hayburn and John Carupo. Um, this is written by two of my friends. I am working on a YouTube video of it right now. Um, I love this book. It's a great one to read before you start school. I'll go into it more in the thank you for the next one in the um, full review but it gives you like lesson frames or templates that you can use with your students as you plan your year and I have this book that I got at the web conference it's called springboard quick creative activities to launch into learning by Mary Beth, Mary Beth Campbell Carolyn Hill and Micah Jacobson it has a bunch of games you can play with your kids in class people ask me about the games that I play with my students in class and this has a ton of ideas I know when you look on like um, Pinterest it always shows the same game so this has a little bit more diverse ideas on um, this one I'm excited to check out and then the last book I picked up is screen school now this one was kind of an impulse buy I'm really into the balance of tech and face-to-face -face relationships and its effects on kids and families and all that um, I think someone posted on Instagram and I had to get it so it's screen school two veteran teachers expose how technology overuse is making our kids dumber by Joe Clement and Matt Miles. Sounds a little harsh, because I also do like technology, and this seems to have like a pretty like, ah, technology's bad stance, but um, I'm looking forward to reading it. I got the paper copy instead of the audio copy because I have a feeling I'll be marking this up as I go. So I'm kind of excited about this, but I'm also a little bit hesitant to read it. Hey, it's Wednesday. I had big plans for today. I was going to record YouTube videos and purge my room and organize everything and go for a walk. But um, this little miss is still sick, so. I spent the day with her in my arms, but I did finish reading. Where did she put them? Bugga. Aha. I finished reading Other People's Children and I finished Kids Deserve It Today. Um, quite the contrast. This one's like a pep talk for teachers and this one's like a bunch of like serious research about race and things. So two kind of opposing things, opposing, opposing things, but um, I need to work on my book reviews. I really want to get them posted. I like posting this. That's what I want to put on my channel. I just need to sit down and get it done. Maybe tomorrow. No, I'm going to a graduation tomorrow. Soon. I'll get them done soon. It's Wednesday and I'm at San Pasquale Academy. It's the school I worked at for 10 years. It is the kids graduation day. I had these kids as freshmen and sophomores. Okay, I'm walking out to my car. Um, graduation was great this school is a residential high school for I'm gonna try to stop it's a residential high school for foster youth which means that all of the kids live here um, a couple of my kids have been here for like six years because they came when their siblings were here and they went to school off campus but it's mostly um, it's high school kids it's a high school but some middle school school kids live here anyways um the school is called San Pasquale Academy. It's part of San Diego County Office of Education's Juvenile Court and Community Schools. That's a mouthful, huh? Anyways, um, it's really cool because only 3% of foster youth graduate college and a lot even drop out of high school. So the school is created to help the kids fix that, like to help fix those statistics and give the kids a chance and give them a stable place to live while they're in high school. So. They live here, they go to comprehensive high school here and it's part of court schools. Anyways, I can go on about this forever. Um, I loved working here. I absolutely loved these kids. Um, my heart is with foster youth. I mean, I'm liking my new English learner position, but I miss working for court schools. I miss working like with the culture of court schools and working with people who think it's really important to teach the kids what they need and to make everything relevant to their cultures and their lives. I miss the conversations with my colleagues. Oh my God, these kids though are hilarious and amazing and they've been through a lot and they're super resilient and they grow so much. Like these kids who graduated home as freshmen and sophomores, oh, they were crazy as freshmen. One of my favorite stories, one of my boys got mad at me. He drew a hippo eating me, put it on a piece of paper and slid it under the door to my classroom to like get me back. Like that's a funny story, but there were also some really like rough stuff that happened here because some of the kids um, have had trauma. But they overcome it and they go on to achieve great things. And I'm very grateful I got to see my kids today and some of my old colleagues. Hey, it's Friday. I just realized I didn't record all day and I'm currently helping a little baby go to sleep, so I'll just talk from the chair. Um, after she goes to sleep, I like to like scroll through Instagram, and I 
I'm not as into like the teacher stuff right now. Anybody else feeling that? Like, I've been out of school for a week. Some people are still in school, and some people are on summer and like teacher, teacher, teacher stuff. And I don't know like what to do with my like teacher friends, um, like my internet teacher friends, my little growing group of people that I communicate with. Like, I don't know what to share right now. Like, should I be sharing teacher stuff or should I be talking about other stuff? I don't know, I'm not quite sure what to do. Like the summer is time I can get a bunch of stuff done, but mm, I don't know, maybe just like some limits for myself or something. But on the other hand, having the unstructured time is starting to feel good and I'm starting to feel more like more chill, like less stressed and like I have to get stuff done and more just like, okay, it's cool. Like I'll just brush the dogs and then like squirt the baby with the hose. So that part's good. Hi, it's Saturday. I am at the wedding of one of my former Girl Scouts and athletes and kind of my student. I subbed for her early in my career. Um, when I first started teaching, I worked in my, um, I worked for my, um, I worked in my alma mater, my alma mater high school, and uh, I was working in my hometown, and so a lot of the kids I had, I'd known since they were little, and I like babysat them, and a lot of those kids are here right now, so the wedding is for one of my former girls. Her name's Rebecca, she's an English teacher, and we've stayed in touch over the years. She did some of her like field work in my classroom actually a while back, but anyways, I am super proud of her, I'm super excited, and feels really good to be here with people from my small hometown and it's great to see my former students growing up like they tower over me and they're married and having babies and to be able to talk to them about like being a mom feels really really cool also I'm aware that this is what happens because I put in the time to build relationships with all of these people and so it's really good to not just be somebody's teacher but to be a permanent person in their life I really appreciate it